Hello there amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to a brand new epic Star Trek video. For today as you can tell for this video I am wearing a Starfleet uniform and of course it is in the science division and of course it is the original series type of style of a Starfleet uniform. So before I get into ranking all of this ranking every single Star Trek TV series from 1966 to 2024 to 2024 to 2024 so of course, I've got to say this, this is my opinion and my opinion alone. But if you want to try and beam into my current location to try and phaser me because I have said something that upsets you, please be aware that I am fully armed with my own phaser and it's not set on stun, it's on set to kill. So if you try to beam in to kill me with your phasers or your Klingon disruptors, your Roman disruptors or your Klingon bat lifts, I am armed. Just to be you say so. If you want to try and kill me, I am armed with my own Federation phaser. So if you want to try and kill me, then I'm sorry, I've got my own phaser. So if you do try to beam in, I'm sorry, I will defend myself. As this is my opinion and my opinion, and this is what I think of every single Star Trek series from worst to best. So, in 11th place, we have Star Trek The Animated Series. The animated series, to me, it isn't as good as the original series. Yes, I do have a few issues with the original series, but I will talk about that in the next place. But the animated series storytelling does some do some quite storytellings. I mean, I do like the fact we see the return of Simeon Jones, uh, Jones from the fantastic episode known as Trip with the Tribbles on Space Station K7. So it's a nice way to follow on with that story. And, of course, Kurt goes... What are you doing here? You should be at K7 picking up the Tribbles. I thought of a new device. It literally does go around killing them. Interesting. You know, I do enjoy the animated series, but not as much as the other Star Treks of this one. But it's got some good episodes. It's got some really, really not great episodes. Not bad episodes. It just has ones that I just don't think are genuine masterpieces in the Star Trek universe. And I'm sorry to say that. So... And, and, oh, and of course, the animated series aired from 1973 to 1974. So then, of course, we have, in 10th place, Star Trek, the original series. Yes, the original series aired in 1966 to 1969. And uh, what can I say about it? Yeah, OK, it does have some great episodes like The Balance of Terror and, of course, uh, the aerial space siege, you know, the tr trial of trip um the Trouble with Tribbles episode, The Enterprise Innocence, just to name a few good episodes. But the reason they had to put the original series in 10th place is because I just don't like William Shepner's acting. I really don't like Captain Kirk in the original series. Now, L Leonard Nimoy is absolutely brilliant as Spock. The rest of the cast, like Michelle Nichols for Ahura, and of course Georgia Kay as Sulu, and Walter, Walter Kay as uh, Chekhov. The series itself is still quite good. It's got some good visual effects. I love the remastered version. That is, I have got on Blu-ray, the remastered, but compared over to the original. The Enterprise looks so much beautiful in pure HD and digitally remastered. But Shatner's acting, it just gets worse for me. And I just don't enjoy the episodes that are more Finch Lint on Kirk. Yes, he is the captain and he's in a lot of episodes. And of course, I do love the episode with... Pike was in the chair because of an innocent that helped that basically made him go all injured. But yeah, I just don't really connect with the original series as other Star Trek shows. I know there are other Trekkies out there and they think the original series is the one that is the best out of all of them. But to me, it's generally not. It's just the one I just don't go back to revisit quite a lot. It still has some good episodes, which I don't mind watching on Paramount Plus or on Netflix. But I just haven't had the urge to re-watch the entire whole run of the original series. I still need to do it, but I haven't had the urge for a very long time. And I'm sorry to say that. Number nine. So in ninth place, we have It's Been a Long Road Getting From There to Here. Yes, it is Enterprise. Yes, a Star Trek Enterprise that originally aired in 2001 to 2005. So, in ninth place, I had to put Enterprise because, one, it is good. It's, it gets so much better in seasons three and four. Three and four are flat out amazing. I mean, seasons one and, one and two, there are some good episodes, like Judgment for season two, 
with the Klingons and Archer being put on trial by the Klingons and then being sent to Wara Penthe. And then, of course, we do have Shockwave Part 1, Shockwave Part 2, where basically they find out it was down to the, Sul the Sulabon. And, of course, we have Bacon Bow, which is a fantastic opener to Star Trek. But this Star Trek series, it's good. But, again, I do enjoy it over the original series because Scott Bakula is absolutely perfect as Captain Jonathan Archer. And I would love to see a season five so we can actually have the refitted NX-01 Enterprise, which I do have the model of up here. So I would love to see the return of the Enterprise at some point and the Enterprise crew. I absolutely love all of the cast. I love Mayweather. I do love Hoshi. I love Travis. I think Travis is a fantastic pilot. He has some good episodes as well, especially when he goes to his parents' um, freighter. And of course, we do have Charles Tucker III and T'Pol and Archer. And of course, we do have some great one-off characters and some reoccurring characters like Shran, who, a.k.a. the Andorian. Absolutely brilliant. Honestly, I have to say, I do love it. I prefer season three and four over the first two seasons, which is why it's a bit lower. Because if it was all on a top notch, I think I would have put it a bit higher. But the fact seasons one and two are definitely the weakest for Enterprise. And then, of course, you jump into season three with the whole Cindy story arc. And then, of course, you go into season four. And basically, it's all full of different story arcs. I mean, you've got the fantastic argument story, story going on in three episodes with... Archer and basically going against uh, Noonien Sung's great 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 grandfather absolutely brilliant and of course we do have the into a mirror into a mirror dark dark mirror something like that and of course it's a fantastic two episodes set in the mirror universe absolutely splendid I do like it I have to be honest with you number six, number eight yes in eighth place we have the latest Star Trek series and it is on its fifth and final season we have Star Trek Discovery. Discovery, I never really got into Discovery like some other people do. I don't know what it was with Discovery. I just didn't click with it straight away. Even though I did enjoy the first season, I just didn't click as it as I did for other Star Treks. I don't know if that was because it had a kind of a gap in between the season where the first part of the season aired in 2017 and then the rest of it aired in 2018. I don't know if that was to do with it. But I absolutely do enjoy season one. I like, I do like Lorca, played played by Isaac um, Jason Isaac. He's absolutely brilliant as Captain Lorca. I would love to see him return into that role. Hopefully, the Prime Lorca, not the Mirror Lorca. I would like to see him return. I don't know what they did with the Klingons. The Klingons look very, very. I know this is a new era of Star Trek, and basically try to revitalize the Klingons, but it was too different. From what we know for the Klingons and... Sorry. <coughs> Bless me. Sorry about that. Yeah. I don't really mind. the like, I don't really care for the Klingons in this episode. Season 2. To me, it is the best season of Discovery to date. I enjoy Season 2 more than I did for Season 1, 3 and 4. And because we're literally on the third episode of Season 5. Season 5, so far, is actually going to become my second favourite season of Star Trek Discovery. Because... We're only three episodes into it, and I absolutely love it. It's an absolutely fantastic first three episodes are. My least favourite season of Discovery is season four. Season three was okay. A big, a bit, for me, it was a bit of a letdown from fan the fantastic season two with the whole Section 31 plot and basically having the Enterprise and Christopher Pike in. But thank God that amazing crew had their own spin-off, which is a bit higher in this list in Strange New Worlds. But... Yeah, Discovery, I know some people love it, some people... I'm not a Discovery hater, I mean, I'm not really a big TNG uh, original series fan, but I still go back and watch it now and again. I need to give it a proper good rewatch, not just watching a few of my favourite episodes. But, yeah, Discovery, it, I just don't really have the urge to go back and revisit the early seasons. The only season of Discovery I have rewatched over and over and over and over and over again in the last three years is season two of discovery because i absolutely just love that season i don't know what it is for season two i just absolutely love it season three it's okay at the moment it is the second best but i think it might become third best after season five because from what i've seen so far season five a fantastic storytelling i absolutely love all three episodes so far so yeah in eighth place we have star trek discovery so 
Where are we in? Number seven. So in seventh place, we have Project Star Trek Prodigy from 2021 to whenever. I mean, Prodigy looked like to only have one season with it basically being kicked off Paramount Plus and having to find a new home thanks to all the other Star Trek fans at Trek Culture and basically signing the petition and getting it moved onto Netflix. So, Prodigy is saved, and I'm quite looking forward to season two. I have to be honest with you, Prodigy, I absolutely like so much more than Discovery, Enterprise, the series, and of course, the animated series. Why do I enjoy this series? Well, I love the fact the USS Protostar is a prototype vessel with a, a very unique star drive, where basically, instead of having warps, warp, like warp speed, it has proto drive. So, when it goes into warp, and you literally, you see the nacelles moving, the ship just flies more faster and he ends up in the neutral zone in the Roman space and Admiral Catherine Janeway in the USS Dora Do, um in the USS Dotty has not Dotty Dorchus that's it the USS Dorchus has to try and capture them. I absolutely do like the design of the Dorchus the Dortresses. I think it's a good ship. I really do love the crew, the cast again it's brilliant so I'm quite looking forward to season two. I'm not saying what I personally enjoy because I might enjoy season two more than season one or I might enjoy season one more than season two. So at the moment this time, I'm keeping my mind open. So at the moment it is in seventh place, but it might be a little bit lower. Where are we next? Ah, number six. In sixth place, we have a series that finished only a year ago. And to be honest with you, it is Star Trek Picard. Uh, for me to put Star Trek Picard in 6th place is because it has moved down a lot. I had it in 3rd place back in 2021-2022 when I did the, a Star Trek ranking for the TV series. And I had it in like in the top in the top 5. But for it to be in 6th place, it's still quite good. The reason it is in 6th place is because of how brilliant and how amazing the 3rd and final season of Star Trek Picard is. I mean, the first season... Absolutely brilliant. I do enjoy the first season. The second season, to me, it's a little bit of a... Not of a great season. It's got some good moments in there. I love the Picard and Q sort of thing going on. I like the fact that they end up going into a movie universe because of Q's change in the timeline. And Picard, Raffi, Seven, and... Uh, Ra Raos... Ra Ra I can't remember his name. I can't pronounce his name, sorry. Um, and of course, Dr. Gelati end up having to fix the timeline. And of course, Gelati does end up being a little bit assimilated by the Borg Queen. And she does become a Borg Queen of a new fraction of the Borg. So yeah, that's a, that's quite good. But the reason it's in sixth place is because of how good season three is. Season three, it is an amazing Star Trek season. I absolutely love it. I mean, I love the Titan. I love the whole thing going on with the second group of the founders, aka Changelings. So I do quite like them. I love the fact we've got the Borg Queen working with the other changelings. I love the fact we have the crew of TNG reunite. I would have loved it if we had more crew of Voyager uh, as well. Because at the moment in this season we only had Seven and Tuvok. I would have loved to see the rest of the crew of Voyager. Like Harry, Tom, Bilana. I would love to see them all get together with the TNG crew. And maybe the Deep Space Nine crew as well. Like Major Kira, you know, Dr. Bashir. Esri Dax. I would love to see the crew of DS9 team up with TNG and Voyager to stop the Borg. So that way, instead of just having the Enterprise D launch to save the day, it would have been so much better and amazing to see Voyager along with the Defiant helping the Enterprise D and Bacar leading, Admiral Bacar leading the fantastic little invasion of the Borg with the Enterprise D. It would have been perfect. Honestly, it would have been perfect. Worf could have commanded the USS Defiant and, of course, we could have seen Atmore Jane return in Voyager. We could have seen Atmore Jane return to command Voyager against the Borg. I really think that would have been perfect, but I do love the fact it is still quite good. I love it because I love the Titan. I love Liam Shaw. I love the references to the Battle of to the Battle of War three five nine from the TNG episode, and of course I love the other little bits and remembrances about the Dominion War. We see the return of Data in a Golem body. I love the battle between Data and Law. A fantastic brother revival, rivalry, rivalry. So yeah, I do quite enjoy Star Trek Picard season one. Absolutely brilliant. I really do enjoy season one. I have rewatched it recently. I'm in the middle of rewatching season two. But I can't really say more than that because I, I just don't really... 
I like season two because of what they're doing with Guinan, that the younger version of Guinan, but I prefer season three. For me to rank all three seasons of Star Trek Picard, it has to go three, one, and then two at the bottom. So yeah, season three is what basically saves Picard and season one from going in the bottom. Number five. So in fifth place, we have Star Trek Lower Decks. Now, this series has really moved up for me. I absolutely love Lower Decks. It is funny. I love the characters. I love Tendi. I love Rinneford. I love Boimler. I love Malina, Mariner. I think they're all, all four of them are fantastic. And the fact the show is ending with its fifth season later this year, in the fall of this year, end of autumn, I'm gutted. I'm a little bit heartbroken because I wanted to see more of this crew, the crew of the USS Cerritos. Because I just absolutely love season, seasons one to four. They are the flat out one of the best seasons of modern Star Trek, the modern golden age of Star Trek. And of course, the other one is a bit higher in this list. So yeah, Lower Decks, I absolutely love every single one of the episodes because one, we have had some fantastic episodes. We've had like some return points of planets. And of course, we see the return of Deep Space Nine and we see the return of Voyager in season three and four. For D well, season three for DS9 and season four for Voyager. And of course we had the Phoenix, the kind of the fantastic ride of the Phoenix. And then of course we have some great other Star Trek vibes to like Star Trek 2, Star Trek 3. I love all the references to TNG. And then of course the reference to TOS. That's what they call it. Oh yeah, you know the TOS eh? era, you know the TOS era. What do you mean TOS? You know, the original series era. That's what we call it. The, the original era of, yeah. I absolutely love Lower Decks. Absolutely brilliant. I love I love them. My favourite character is Mariner. She's just absolutely funny. And the fact that this show is set like a year after Star Trek Nemesis. It's one of the best things about it. Is because when the show started, we were in 2380. I think round about now we are 2385. Because I think they go by year by year by year. And the fact that we are literally like two years away from the Romulan Star Empire going supernova with the Romulan Sun, I would love to see seven seasons of Lower Decks and see how basically what happened to the Romulans affect the crew of the USS Cerritos. I really think that might be interesting. And the fact that season four, we kind of saw all of them get promoted to Lieutenant, not Ensign, so they all move out of the Lower Decks and have their own quarters. So yeah, I do you think that is actually quite a good level up for him that was a bit of a thing i love the crossover with strange new worlds as well so yeah i really do love lower decks absolutely amazing series i absolutely love lower decks i know some fans out there don't like it because i talked to a few of them at comic con last week and they said oh we're not we're not too fond of lower decks but man oh man i love lower decks it's it's funny i absolutely love every single one of the characters strax has got to be my second favorite character after melina because of the fact he's a Bajoran, I love the episode where they go to Deep Space Nine and him and Major Kira are kind of having that little bit of a beef with each other, that argument. <laughs> Absolutely funny. Oh, I saved your life. No, you saved my life. I had to return the favour. Oh, you saved my life. No, I saved your life. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And I love the way how Captain Mariner, Captain Freeman talks to Quark. Well, Quark, business is booming, I say. I, what would you be? Why well, behind bars then being... I love the way how he goes, no! I just absolutely love that line. I absolutely love it. Number four. Number four. And in fourth place, we have Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine is amazing. I don't really care for the first three seasons, but the fact it has seasons four, five, six, and seven building up the whole lot of it. Absolutely brilliant and amazing. Again, fantastic. Even though seasons one to three does have some great episodes I do enjoy, like Emissary, Move Along Home. I do love that episode. Amber Lorraine, Count to a Four, Anna Marine, Count to <laughs> then Count Add Three More. I just absolutely love that rhyme. I really love Avray Blocks when he's there, literally just dropping going, Anna Marine, Count to a Four, Anna Marine, then Add Three More, Anna Marine. I just really love that episode. It's, I love the Marquis episode as well. That's a good two parter. In season two, season three, I love the search. I feel like I love the fact we have diecast where we see Oda get tortured by Garrick of his father's request. Season four, 
absolutely amazing. Every single uh, from season four, that's when Deep Space Nine gets into its strife with the whole little bit of the Klingon war, then kind of switching from the Klingons going toward the Cardassians and fighting with the Federation. So you got the Klingons fighting two lots of war, one with the Cardassians and one with the Federation, and then basically finding out that basically General um, General Martok has basically been captured and basically replaced by a shapeshifter. And then leading into the fantastic Dominion War, but there again, though, it does have that fantastic episode of when DS9 ends up meeting TOS, and of course you have the the Trouble with Tribbles episode, basically playing through Deep Space Nine. And of course you got two different you get to watch it through two different points of view. You can watch it in the original series timeline, or you can watch it with Deep Space Nine's crew, and the Deep Space Nine's crew is amazing, top notch. I do love that episode. And then of course I do love the rest of season four, four sorry season five, six, and seven because I love the Dominion War. And it's nice to see the Federation trying to fight for peace where. As we all know, a war is the only chance for hope. And I just absolutely love it. I really do. So, yeah, in fourth place, we have Deep Space Nine. In third place, we have Star Trek Voyager. I'm sorry to my fantastic, amazing best friend, Jamie Arrowsmith, because he is a big Voyager fan. Voyager, for me, is in third place because it was in second place. But I know that Star Trek show has really kicked it out of its park for me. I absolutely do enjoy Voyager. I love all seven seasons, including some of the bad episodes, apart from one, aka Threshold, with basically Janeway and Paris kind of get mutated into little baby lizards. Voyager does a lot of things right with the Borg. I mean, in TNG, the Borg was settled to be this big filling for the Federation, and the fact Voyager was the only Federation ship in the Delta Quadrant and basically defeat the Borg once after the other after the other, where basically it just shows... How what, what how much damage one Federation starship can do to the Borg, where the Borg can assimilate an entire whole culture. It takes a whole fleet of the Federation to kind of destroy a Borg cube and a Borg sphere. Where basically, it, Voyager does get a little bit battered and a bit beaten with the Borg. I mean, they do come across species 8472, the Erosion, the Kazan. Oh, they even go across the alien creatures with the Plague. Yeah, the episode is quite good. I do enjoy Voyager. Absolutely brilliant. I love the hologram two-part as well because Janeway gave them Federation technology and they kind of turned it into wrong by basically hunting down the, the hologram. So, yeah, that's actually quite good. It is Voyager is absolutely brilliant. I do love it. And I love the Equinox two-part as well because I love how Captain Ramsey, Captain Ramsey and basically the crew of the USS Equinox betray stuff. It's pretty cool to try and find a way back home. Yeah, I do enjoy Voyager. Absolutely brilliant and amazing. Number two. So in second place, we have Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I honestly have to admit, I love Strange New Worlds. Oops. I absolutely do love Strange New Worlds. It's amazing. It's brilliant. I just can't get enough of it. And again, Strange New Worlds, it is that one Star Trek show that basically is absolutely amazing and fantastic and i just can't get enough of it i mean the whole cast that played captain pike number one una you know spock for ethan peck and of course we have basically fantastic other characters that we never knew about i mean we got jess bush as nurse chapel and she's absolutely perfect as the role for nurse chapel 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 no i can't sorry i can't get the word out there I also love the storyline of two seasons. I mean, for a series Star Trek to have two seasons and basically to make it into second place. You've got to admit, it's a good, it is a good Star Trek show if it reaches into second place for me. I didn't really think Strange New Worlds will actually be this high, but I'm going to talk about the stuff I really love about it. Captain Pike. I think they've got the best actor in Anto, in Anto Mungo. He's absolutely brilliant as... Captain Pike. I love Ethan Peck as Spock. I really like Jess Bush as Nurse Chapel. I really love Dr. Moranga. He's absolutely brilliant. I do love Khan's great, great, great granddaughter, something like that. A relative of Khan, and she's basically Enterprise's security officer. So that's actually quite good. I also love the design of the Enterprise. Now, I really love that. When the Enterprise returned in Star Trek Discovery Season 2, I love the design of it. I mean, it looks so much better than the original series, but I think this is what the Enterprise would have looked like if the original series had the budget of Discovery and Strange New Worlds to date. 
Again, I just absolutely love Strange New Worlds. It's brilliant. It's amazing. Every single one of the stories, I love what they've done with the Gorn. Yes, they have revamped the Gorn, but I think it's perfect. I like the storytelling for it. I just absolutely flipping love it. And the fact that we see Spock's Dini Enterprise in season two's first episode, brilliant. I love the crossover episode. And for God help me, I even enjoyed the singing episode, the one, the musical episode I did. It's just absolutely brilliant. Honestly, absolutely brilliant. So then, of course, we have my number one. We have my favourite Star Trek show of all time. It is The Next Generation. The Next Generation is my favourite because this is the one I grew up watching a lot of with my dad. I love the Enterprise D. I love Captain Picard. Uh, it's such a shame that Picard is literally in sixth place, but I would have loved to put this a bit higher. But season three does keep it in basically in sixth place. But I absolutely love TNG. Yeah, okay, season one isn't that good. Season two gets a little bit better. Season three, phenomenal. Season four, phenomenal. Season five, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Season six, perfect. Absolutely perfect. And season seven, man. Season seven is a whopper of a season. I just love all of TNG. Yes, season one is bad, but it still has some great episodes like Encounter at Farpoint, Hide in the Queue, The Battle. Then, of course, we have... 1000100 with the Binance Steam the Enterprise. We have Skin of Evil. We've got Set Privacy and The Neutral Zone. Absolutely perfect episodes for the first season. Season two, we have a Master of Honor. Again, I love that episode. It's good to see a Federation officer serving aboard a Klingon vessel. And of course, we meet Kern, who is, I think it's the actor that plays Kern, that is Worf's brother. Season two has got the Delph, the shape-shifting episode, which is quite good. I do quite enjoy that one because that was my first ever TNG episode I watched. Season 3, it, again, I just love all the season 3. From season 3 to season 5, TNG is at its best. Absolutely at its best. I love the Enterprise D. I love Picard. I love Riker. I love the... My favourite episode of TNG has got to go to the, ba the best of both worlds, followed by Descent Part 1 and 2, followed by all good things, followed by Encounter at Farpoint. And in fifth place, we have, again, another great episode, Chain of Command, where Picard gets kidnapped by the Cardassians for doing a mission for the Federation. And, of course, the torture room. And goes, how many lights do you see? There are four lights that are five. <laughs> like that. I really love TNG. Some great, amazing episodes. I absolutely loved it. Honestly, do I absolutely love TNG. A fantastic Star Trek season. So that is me ranking all 11 of the Star Trek series. This series a recap. In 11th place, we have Star Trek the Animated Series. In 10th place, we have Star Trek the Animated Series. Sorry, no. In 11th place, we've got Star Trek the Animated Series. In 10th place, we've got the original series. In 9th place, we have Enterprise. In 8th place, we have Discovery. In 7th place, we have Prodigy. In 6th place, we have Picard. In 5th place, we have Lower Decks. In 4th place, we have... Deep Space Nine. In third place, we have Foyager. In second place, we have Strange New Worlds. And in first place, we have TNG. How do you rank all 11 of the Star Trek TV series? Let me know in the comments. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And if you do want to try and kill me, I am armed with my own phaser. So bring it on if you want to. If not, then thank you for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And of course, live long and prosper.